12 years ago, the city was still mourning after 9-11. And as I was reflecting on what had happened, I was wondering why it seems that always easier to destroy than to build. And why small things can destroy big things. The infamous uh, grain of sand can put to a halt the sophisticated piece of machinery, and in this case, a few box cutters ended up ultimately bringing down entire buildings and killing thousands of innocent people. But if this, if this is true, is the reverse true as well? Can we build big things with small things? And yes, we can. And actually, seeds are the perfect example for that. And so I decided to rebuild the Twin Towers, 10 times bigger. I planted seeds from ground zero to 22nd Street, 4,000 of them. And I placed some little signs next to my plantations, asking people to kindly water and tender the plants. Well, it didn't take me very long to realize that this was not going to work. <laughs> and so, what a can in hand. I spent the summer touring the project, watering the plants, talking to people, and sharing stories of grief and renewal. And in the process, I realized that what I had tried to accomplish with the seeds, I was actually doing it while talking to people, rebuilding the spirit of the Twin Towers. And that's how I started to use participation as an ingredient to my art projects. Now, participation is a difficult technique to use because you never know what you're going to get. The most common form of participation is destruction. No need to ask. There's always going to be someone to trash the project or cut the flower or whatever. But participation is very interesting because it brings the unexpected into the creative process. And ultimately, as an artist, what I'm interested in is to create coincidences. Now, that seems like an impossible proposition. Could anyone create a chance encounter or a synchronicity? Could I create something that is so unexpected that it mirrors life itself? That's the paradox of coincidences. We treat them as marginal, benign, and yet they shape our lives in big ways. The people we love, we often meet through the most extraordinary circumstances. The very fact that we exist is the result of astonishing coincidences. 20 years ago, because two people we are seated next to each other on a plane from New York to Paris. I landed a job here and moved here. Had they been seated a row apart, had they flown with a different airline or at a different time, and I wouldn't be here today talking to you. So, how can I create coincidences? Well, from my experience, there are two main principles to follow when working with coincidences. The first principle consists in embracing coincidences whenever they surface in the process. A few years ago, I was working on a completely unrelated project, and I stumbled upon a rhyme that I learned and loved when I was a kid. It's called The Ant. And it goes like this. An 18-meter-long ant wearing a hat. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Hey, why not? And I barely finished reading the poem that I knew that I was going to build an 18-meter-long ant wearing a hat. And so I did. And because Robert Desnos, who 
authored the poem, died during the war from deportation, I wanted to display the sculpture next to the site where he had been interned during the war. And I started contacting people to get some funding for the project. And that's how I got connected with an old man who had been in contact with Robert Desnos during the war. And Desnos had told him that 18 meters, that was the length of the locomotive of the train deporting the Jews during the war. And what Desnos was referring to in that poem was deportation itself. That's what happens when you embrace coincidences. The second principle to work with coincidences is to create situations that are conducive to coincidences. And for that, I need to introduce the element of chance. And that's why participation is such a useful technique, precisely because it brings the unexpected to the creative process. And so today, I've been inviting you to dream on me a series of white mats on which I ask you to walk and step on and do some yoga poses. And like a detective, I'm recording the traces of dreams. Underneath each of the mats, I have placed two layers of canvas. One is covered with pigment, the other is blank. Each time you press the mat, I'm recording body prints, hand prints, footprints. And all this with the idea that maybe I'm going to create coincidences in the process. Now, will the project create coincidences? Well, I don't know yet. But I do urge you, please, if anything happens, come back to me and let me know. Like beauty, coincidences are in the eye of the beholder. They are everywhere around us in life and in the arts. And my work is to reveal that rich layer of coincidences in the hope that you too will discover the magical powers of coincidences. Thank you. <laughs>